we are back as part of this uh, day-long discussion of the first 100 days of the Obama presidency. This is an inextricable part of that. 41 people dead. New violence, Sadr City this morning. That section of Baghdad that was in the news for so long for good reason. 70 injuries here. As I said before the break, we are fortunate that our chief foreign correspondent, Richard Engel, uh, has chosen to spend a little bit of his home leave with us here in New York before leaving again for Pakistan this coming Saturday. Richard's here with us in the studio. It's interesting watching you back in your home newsroom where we're all forced to communicate with you by telephone and computer while you're away. People get to actually see you and talk to you. Invariably, they say, tell me, what do you, th what do you make of Iraq these days? And what do you tell them? I'm, I'm actually very concerned about what's going on in Iraq right now. We could be in a situation where there's the eye of the storm, where things are quiet, but the storm is starting to brew around the edges and is starting to, to, take, to take force. The conflict in Iraq right now is at a very important turning point. It is the transition from a combat role, from a warfighting role, to a training role. What everybody feared. And the, 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 the danger is that it's going to be an unclear mission for U.S. troops. U.S. troops are now mostly confined to their bases. What's going to happen in June is that they will legally be confined to their bases in most Iraqi cities and will only be able to operate with a warrant. Now we're seeing the Iraqi government flexing its muscles, and the prime minister of Iraq, Maliki, is threatening to prosecute some American soldiers who were involved in a mission that uh, the Iraqis say resulted in civilian casualties. So we're entering a gray area, and I think that is, that is a troubling thing, considering you have more than 100,000 American troops on the ground. Now, let me take you to another front entirely, where you're headed this weekend, Pakistan. Where do you view, you've been in the country now for a few days, you've been able to see American media enough back home. Where do you view Americans' understanding of the importance, the urgency of the problem, versus your understanding of the urgency of the problem? I think by the, uh, the problem is much more urgent than people are talking about. Uh, it, in the United States, there's a whole different set of debates. And, and I, right. every time I come back, you realize how disconnected foreign news is to, to the domestic media market. But the situation in, in Pakistan is, is critical right now. The Pakistani military moved in to try and retake some areas that are just 60 miles from the capital, Islamabad. We're seeing the country of Pakistan, 170 to 175 million people armed with nuclear weapons, slowly losing control of its territory. And that is a tremendously dangerous development. And I think people should be watching it very closely. I spoke to one active general uh, this, this weekend in the U.S. military, and he said people are watching Pakistan very closely and thinks we could have what he described as a 1979 moment, meaning the, the revolution in Iran, where everyone suddenly woke up and mm -hmm. there was a, an Islamic revolution in Iran and it changed foreign policy for decades. That could be happening soon in, in Pakistan. It doesn't get more ominous than that. I know you're on MSNBC all day and on all the other broadcasts of NBC News. Uh, thank you for this, Richard. We'll be talking, obviously, before your departure.